There's a famous quote saying that having a dog will bless you with many of the happiest days of your life and one of the worst. The time on earth is just way too short. Too short to go on the same walk every single day. Too short to be surrounded by the same four walls day in and day out. Too short to just wait for us each day to come back home. Our dogs are our best friends. They listen to us whenever there's no one else around. They accept us on our worst days and try to cheer us up whenever we feel down. They make us smile just by being themselves and we don't have to prove anything to them because they just love us the way we are, just like best friends do. Why would we leave a best friend at home when we go on an adventure and explore a new place? Why would we not share our happiest moments with him? Is it too complicated to take him with us? Or are we just too scared of all the things that could possibly go wrong? Before Sven and I adopted Felix, we traveled to over 50 countries together. We knew we wanted a four-legged friend to be part of our family, but we didn't want to stop traveling. Friends and family told us that it wouldn't be possible to take the dog with us, but we didn't listen to them. Of course we were scared on our first trips with Felix, but we did it anyways. And we didn't regret a single second of it. More than five years later, Felix has visited over 30 countries and his passport became his best friend. He took planes, buses, boats and trains. He lived in a van, swam in the ocean, saw the northern lights and tried pizza in Italy. Traveling with a dog is possible and easier as you might think. In this video, we want to share some useful tips when it comes to taking your best friend on a trip to another country. Step 1. Where to go. I wish I could tell you a general rule for entering foreign countries with your dog, but the truth is that it doesn't exist. It really depends where you want to travel. So once you know your destination, you can start doing research on the entry regulations for your fluffy friend. In some countries it's pretty easy to take a dog in, in others a very long quarantine is required, so I wouldn't recommend to go there. Step 2. Documents and vaccinations. The required documents and vaccinations to enter a foreign country usually depend on a few things. First, the origin of the dog. In countries like Germany, where we are from, there are not many cases of rabies, which means it's easier for us to get into other countries because Germany is not ranked as a high-risk country. Next up, the country you want to travel to. Mm, let's put it that way. It's usually much more difficult to get into well-developed countries because they have many rules. In some countries, especially islands like Iceland, for example, it's almost impossible to bring a dog just to go there for vacation. Another point Point is the age of the dog that also matters. A puppy for example can't travel immediately because some time has to pass after it got the first rabies vaccine. Last but not least, some breeds are prohibited for entering certain countries at all because under their laws these breeds are ranked as dangerous. Oh, and before I forget, if you travel to a foreign country, please make also sure to get the necessary documents it takes to go back to where you're coming from. Some paperwork and checkups need to be done before you leave to make sure you can get back into your home country. Okay, all of this might sound very complicated, I know, but in the end it's all worth it, believe me. It also gets easier from trip to trip. So if you need some guidance and want to know the entry regulations like paperwork and vaccinations for certain countries in detail, you can check out our dog travel guide ebook where we explain all the necessary steps it takes to bring a fluffy friend into other countries. I will put the link into the description. Step 3. Travel time. Don't forget to think about a good time to travel. If you got an arctic dog like we do, a summer vacation in a very hot country might not be the best idea. In the past we made great experiences with traveling off season. During that time prices are usually much lower and there are not many tourists around because the weather isn't perfect. But for us as dog owners it definitely means less stress so it's alright. <laughs> Step 4. Transportation. Finding the perfect transportation for your dog really depends on his character. So far we traveled with Felix by plane, car, train, bus and boat. All these different modes of transportation fulfilled the purpose they had. They got us to our travel destination. But some trips were definitely much more stressful than others. Traveling by plane. 
Many people think this is the only option when they want to travel with their dog to other countries, but that's simply not true. I will share some other options later. So different airlines have different rules, but small dogs that fit into a bag can usually travel in the cabin under the seat, whereas larger dogs need to go to the luggage compartment. In our ebook, we made a list of the most popular airlines worldwide and their requirements for dogs and also shared some flying tips and tricks. But please consider that flying can be very stressful for anxious dogs. If your dog needs to fly in the luggage compartment you also need to bring a box for most airlines and have to drop him off hours before the flight. In my opinion it only makes sense when the travel time in a different mode of transportation is just way too long compared to flying. But again it really depends on the character of your dog. Traveling by car. Going on vacation with your Onka is probably the easiest way, even if it takes much longer than flying. You can stop wherever you want and take as many breaks as you like. We usually prefer road trips with many stops, much more than just going to one place and staying there. So we would just drive a few hours, stop at a place for let's say two nights and explore it, then drive again for a few hours to another interesting place, etc. On our Instagram and TikTok we share many videos videos about dog friendly places and you can also check out our blog with a list of our favorite travel destinations for dog owners in Europe. All links are in the description. Traveling by train. Depending on the country and the operating train company, rules for transporting dogs can vary a lot. Great alternatives to driving your own car are night trains, for example, where you can just hop in in the evening and arrive at your destination the next morning. Traveling by bus. Most bus companies don't allow dogs, unfortunately, but there are some exceptions. Last but not least, traveling by boat. To get to some places, a boat ride is a great alternative to flying because many boats offer private cabins that can be booked for you and your dog. So you basically stay in a hotel room while you go to another the place. Step 5 is all about hotels. Finding a dog friendly accommodation is very easy actually. Just activate the dog filter on your preferred booking site to make sure you will only see places that allow dogs. Most of them usually charge a fee which can vary from 5 to 50 euros per night and per dog. Step 6. Restaurants and sites. Depending on the country and the dog friendliness there in general, dogs are either allowed or not allowed at public places. So far we barely had any problems to take Felix with us to a certain place. If he wasn't allowed inside, it's usually fine to take him to the terrace. Step 7. <laughs> we are almost there. It's all about packing, so um, a few items make traveling with a dog much more convenient like foldable bowls or a water bottle that works like a bowl. A full list with everything that we usually take with us on trips can be found on our Amazon page. Now we finally made it to the last step which is step 8 and basically about some tips and tricks along the way and emergency situations, how to react to them. Um, like what if your dog needs to see a vet when you are on vacation. Luckily this only happened to us once and we drove to the next town to go see a vet and was all fine. So just make sure to take a few things with you for emergency situations like a bandage and something against diarrhea. We always use the Moreau carrot soup for example. Also, don't stress yourself too much on the trips because dogs can feel the energy of their owner and if you're constantly nervous, they will be too. And that's it! I really hope this video was helpful for you and you got a bit of an overview about this topic. As I said before, traveling with a dog is not that complicated actually if you do your research properly. Thanks so much for watching, don't forget to like the video and follow this channel for more travel content. And always remember, don't leave your dog at home, take him with you instead. Bye bye guys!